Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Solar Impulse 2 strikes out across the Atlantic, the Red Arrows limit their flight demonstration at Farnborough, O&N Aircraft Modifications closes its doors. I'm Bree Cross, it's June 21st, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Solar Impulse 2 took off early Monday morning from Kennedy Airport in New York to attempt the crossing of the Atlantic Ocean in its continuing mission to prove that an efficient energy future is possible. The solar-powered airplane of Bertrand Picard and Andre Borschberg, capable of flying day and night with no fossil fuel, is expected to land at the Sevilla Airport in Spain on June 23rd. The flight that should take four days and four nights non-stop depending on weather conditions is one of the most challenging legs of the round-the-world solar flight. The delicate aircraft, which cruises at about 45 miles per hour, is intolerant to weather challenges that can sometimes be encountered on Atlantic crossings. After landing in Europe, the mission will continue onward to Abu Dhabi in the UAE, where the adventure started in March 2015. The Royal Air Force aerobatic team, the Red Arrows, will be flying at the Farnborough International Air Show and engaging with both adults and young people on all three days that are open to the general public. However, it has been determined that the high speed and dynamic nature of the traditional Red Arrows aerial display is no longer appropriate due to the large amounts of local housing, business areas, and major transport links underneath the planned air show area. In addition to the Red Arrows flyover with the new F-35 Lightning II aircraft on July 11th, other Red Arrow flyovers in different formations are now planned for other days as well. It's believed that these additional flyovers, together with more exciting opportunities for the public to engage with the Red Arrows team on the ground and other RAF air and ground displays, will ensure the air show remains a truly exciting, inspirational, and entertaining family event. After the break, ONN leaves others to carry on with service. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. ONN oh, Aircraft Modifications in Factoryville, Pennsylvania has closed its doors following the retirement of Myron and Diane Olson. A posting on the company website, which is now just a landing page, reads, quote, It is with mixed emotions that ONN Aircraft Modifications announces the closing of our business at Siemens Airport. For 29 years, we have been fortunate to be able to serve the general aircraft population to develop innovative and excellent modifications, and most importantly, to have forged very special and lifelong friendships with so many of our customers. However, according to the website, portions of their modification business will continue through Griggs Aircraft Refinishing. It's announced they have purchased the supplemental type certificates from ONN. They will continue to produce the Silver Eagle 210 conversions, the auxiliary fuel tanks, and Mooney bladder kits. The notice also said that support will be provided at a new repair station established at Hazleton Municipal Airport. The statement included, quote, Myron and Diane Olson have retired, but we are always available to take your calls. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. For our first event, we start in the middle of the week on June 22nd, with a Wild Wednesday at Willow Run being held on the Willow Run Airport in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Being presented by the Yankee Air Museum, it's going to be a major air show that will feature the Canadian Forces Snowbirds and an incredible lineup of other performers. On June 25th and 26th, the Vero Beach Air Show will feature a host of acts, static displays, entertainment for kids, and good food will add to the fun. The whole thing takes place on the Vero Beach Airport and highlights air show performers and military demonstrations. The lineup includes top performers, including a wing walker. The Navy Blue Angels will not appear as scheduled, but the tactical demonstration team from Strike Fighter Squadron 106 will participate in the scheduled Angel slot to provide a great display of Navy power. 
Our next event combines an air show and a concert on June 25th in Clayton, Georgia. It's called the second annual Heaven's Landing Air Show and Concert, and you'll experience an evening of radical aerobatic flying and great live music in the beautiful North Georgia mountains. Patty Wagstaff will be there, and the V-22 Osprey will beat the air into submission. June 24th through the 26th gives us the Utah Air Show, Warriors over Wasatch. It's being held at the Hill Air Force Base, and they say the air show promises to be an event of excitement, thrills, and breathtaking flying like you've never seen before. You'll see Red Bull pilot Kirby Chambliss, a salute to our historical air power, and the awe-inspiring United States Air Force Thunderbirds. After these messages, NTSB to hold a weather briefing forum. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The use of pilot weather reports will be the topic during an NTSB forum on June 21st and 22nd. It will focus on the weather dissemination process and future improvements to provide greater pilot awareness of weather conditions. Dr. Human Nick Azad said the TSA made him miss his flight at Minneapolis-St. Paul despite having arrived two hours before departure. He has now filed a lawsuit to recover the $506.85 he paid to get on a different flight. Gulfstream has completed ultimate load testing for its new Gulfstream G500. Ultimate load represents 150% of limit load and is equivalent to a 1.5 safety factor specified by the FAA and EASA. They will now continue to test the destruction point. The global fleet of Sikorsky S-92 helicopters recently surpassed 1 million flight hours. Since 2004, Sikorsky has delivered more than 275 S-92 helicopters, and they say the S-92 helicopter sets the industry standard for safety and reliability. Delta Private Jets and GoGo will soon deliver a 4G in-flight experience to DPJ's customers. DPJ, a subsidiary of Delta Airlines, plans to equip its fleet of more than 70 aircraft with GoGo Biz 4G to provide a superior service to passengers. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. There's no place like home, particularly when home is called Earth. International Space Station Expedition 47 Commander Tim Kropa of NASA, Flight Engineer Tim Peek of the European Space Agency, and Soyuz Spacecraft Commander Yuri Melchenko of Roscosmos touched down in Kazakhstan on Saturday. Three crew members returned to Earth after wrapping up 186 days in space. The crew completed the in-flight portion of NASA's Human Research Studies in Ocular Health, Cognition, Salivary Markers, and Microbiome. From the potential development of vaccines to data that could be relevant in the treatment of ocular diseases, the research will help NASA prepare for human long-duration exploration while also benefiting people on Earth. This was Peak's first mission into space while both Copra and Malenchenko have been up to the International Space Station before. Copra has an accumulated 244 days in space and Malenchenko has amassed a total of 828 days in space. The next launch of a replacement crew in Expedition 48 is planned to take place on July 6. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.